హరి కృష్ణ ఎవరువన్ మై బెసెన్స్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ వాంచాకల్ప తరుభ్యశ కృపాసింధు భీవచ పదితాన పావనేభ్యో వైష్ణవేభ్యో నమో నమ సో విల్ ఆఫర్ బ్రీఫ్ ప్రేయర్స్ అండ్ దెన్ విల్ స్టార్ట్ టుడేస్ డిస్కషన్ ఓం అజ్ఞానతి మిరంతస్ జ్ఞానాంచన శలాఖయ చక్షురుమితం తస్మై శ్రీ గురవే నమ నమో విష్ణుపదాయ కృష్ణ ప్రస్థాయ భూతలే శ్రీమతి భక్తి వేదాంత స్వామి నిత్యనామిని నమస్తే సారస్వతి దేవే గౌరవాణి ప్రచారిణే నిర్విశేష శూన్యవాది పాశ్చాత్య దేశతారిణి జై శ్రీకృష్ణ చైతన్య ప్రభు నిత్యానంద శ్రీ అద్వైత గదాధర శ్రీవాసాది గౌర భక్త వృంద హరే కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరే 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 రామ హరే రామ 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 హరే హరే so it's a wonderful wonderful that so many children are recited bhagavad gita verses today uh, having celebrated bhagavad gita jayanti recently world gita day also branding now like that so people most people will know what is world yoga day what is world women's day what is <laughs> different things world health day like that old gita day now we are calling it that's a good way you can also promote to your friends like that so so today's topic is relevance of bhagavad gita in our today's life in the modern life that is a topic because most people think that bhagavad gita is very very old 5000 years old it may not be so relevant today what do we need to read now why is what is the relevance of that that is a topic i'll briefly touch on the uh, context of bhagavad gita where it is spoken by lord krishna to arjuna and then uh, we talk about the, how it's relevant uh, for our life today bhagavad gita principles so that we can apply in our life that that portion that is the second portion of the talk and then after that i will encourage you uh, with my inspiration whatever inspiration i got uh, to read regularly bhagavad gita and then last is i will also request you if you are so inspired you can share with others how you can share with others also i'll share with you so basically we will talk about the relevance of bhagavad gita and then uh, why is it important to read and how can we overcome some obstacles in reading systematically regularly like that and then finally how to share with others few tips yeah that's the oral outline of the talk today so most of you know um, in case somebody is uh, uh, new i, I believe a couple of you are new uh, bhagavad gita is a, is the main scripture we follow and it is uh, called the song of god in english and bhagavad gita is a scripture that is sung by supreme lord himself lord krishna in the middle altar here krishna and with this concert rather and here there in the middle altar so krishna spoke to arjuna arjuna is one of his friend oh, thank, thank you thank you please so krishna spoke to his friend and a devotee on the beginning of the battle uh, on the battlefield basically so there is a overall context many of you know in the battlefield is a very serious matter and that means everybody is trying to see how i can win what i can do to win like that and it's very intense uh, time and during that time krishna spoke to sp- krishna and arjuna took some time it, it would you say for 45 minutes to 2 hours max so some time to give instruction to arjuna at that time why did krishna spoke uh, Arj- uh, bhagavad gita to arjuna because in the middle of the battlefield uh, for those who may not know the context uh, it was a battle between two brothers they are called pandavas and kauravas uh, if you don't get the names it's okay but the overall concept is uh, two sets of brothers they they fight on the battlefield so that way the the kingdom belongs to one set of brothers called pandavas but the other set of brothers are asub the kingdom and not giving it to the rightful owners of the kingdom there is a reason battle was being fought so that time arjuna the friend of krishna he is uh, he sees the other side and th- this side also both sides are relatives only so is overwhelmed how can i fight with my relatives like that with that overwhelm uh, that he has he becomes bewildered and becomes confused what to do what to act how to act should i fight or should i not fight is in that confusion and uh, our acharyas describe that rajna was put in that such confusion only for our benefit so that what our instruction is giving to arjuna will benefit all of us in our life so because we also see different dilemmas in life what decision to take this route or this route like that so bhagavata gives profound knowledge that helps us to lead the life 
so that way all the uncertainties in life we can uh, move around them move navigate them navigate with them and deal with them properly and then be happy in this life so generally some people think bhagavad gita talks about the knowledge that helps us only to go back to spiritual world or go back to krishna or something that will help us only after we die but nothing helps us right now so in fact during my beginning years that was my quest also i want to be happy now right now and then i want to be happy after death also because most of us do not seen what is happening after death so bhagavad gita is actually considered a manual of life that helps us to live our, our life right now in a happy way peaceful way with uh, uh, in a in a way by understanding the big picture of life big picture of who we are big picture of what is the purpose of life how do we gain the eternal unending happiness those are all given in the bhagavad gita so that is why bhagavad gita is meant to be read by us right now not when we become old or uh, when somebody dies we read some shlokas not only that so that is the essence of bhagavad gita context so now some of the relevance of bhagavad gita is many of many of us know today there are so many people uh, who are struggling with bad habits struggling with some addictions struggling with depression struggling with anxieties struggling with different kinds of stress due to different different factors in different people lives so bhagavad gita gives this profound knowledge that we can actually apply in our life so that we can avoid all these negative emotions or if we cannot avoid them we can it we can quickly overcome quickly get out of that negative emotional scenario where we are in at that time so that's why bhagavad gita is helpful in another way to tell about bhagavad gita is bhagavad gita gives us the knowledge uh, in the material world krishna says in bhagavad gita material world is called dukkhalayam asasutam that means it's a temporary world but full of miseries but bhagavad gita helps us to Uh, work through all the miseries that we come in life for example there are four problems that are common to everyone but death old age and disease so no one can avoid this nobody wants them but they they get it and then there are three other problems or miseries that are described in bhagavad gita also those are miseries caused by one's own body and mind miseries caused by other living entities whether it's human beings animals insects virus bacteria all this can cause problems to us so miseries caused by my own body and my own mind miseries caused by other living entities and miseries caused due to natural disturbances like earthquakes tornadoes or too much cold too much uh, heat all those different problems so these problems will not go away by reading bhagavad gita but we know how to deal with them how to live a practical peaceful happy life even through them and then at the end of the end of the life how to achieve a eternal unending happiness that is a promise given bhagavad gita and that's what practically seen by several devotees who have applied this knowledge in our life for example when our founder acharya ac bhakti vedanta swami sri lubrupal he came to india uh, in 1960s from in, uh, india to us he came that time there was a culture of all the people many teenagers many young adults they were all not knowing what is the purpose of life they were trying to see what we can do how we, how we can find happiness so they unfortunately went into bad habits like drugs liquor intoxication like that but with the prabhupad purity and prabhupad personal teachings from bhagavad gita we can all practically have experienced that they all changed from hippies what they are called as hippies to happies so that is a uh, greatness of bhagavad gita and the teachings of uh, association of a few devotee like sri prabhupad so that is another practical example we see and another thing we can see is those devotees who really apply this knowledge in their life they are happy no matter what what calamity that comes in their life of course somebody may say oh i see thousand people coming to a temple but all of them are not happy so once you come to the temple then you take up the path gradually step by step so as you see somebody is seriously and sincerely taking up the path 
then you will see the percentage of people who are happy. You cannot expect somebody coming, walking into the first day in the temple to, to be elevated the same consciousness level like somebody who is practicing for a few weeks, months, years like that. So that is another factor we need to consider when we are considering. Because some people think, oh, I go to the temple, but not everybody is kind, not everybody is nice, not everybody is having good qualities. But this is what we need to evaluate. Only a percentage of people who are sincerely applying, they will progress to higher consciousness. And that helps them to uh, have the good qualities, spiritual qualities that will everlasting and that makes them very happy also. That is another aspect of relevance of Bhagavad Gita. And then uh, another aspect of relevance of Bhagavad Gita uh, is Bhagavad Gita teaches us several values and values are what we all live by because we all have learnt many of you are from India also some of them are from here so all of us have got some values from our parents for example and from our culture and traditions with those values we operate in our life we navigate our life with those values always so for example our parents taught us it's important to be kind to elders so then we use that value whenever we interact even after 40 years after our parents are away from us we can learn that we imbibe that value and we are kind to elders for example somebody says somebody is less fortunate we need to help them our parents told us then we learn that value when, whenever we have an opportunity according to our capacity we help somebody else like that there are several values Bhagavad Gita teaches there is a study done in Oxford uh, University in, U in UK. They summarized all the values of Bhagavad Gita into like six, va six core values. A lot, lot of scholars and a lot of devotees collaborated to summarize the, the six core values that Bhagavad Gita teaches. I'll mention few of them, six of them. First one is um, Samadarshana, that means equal vision. So what does this equal vision mean? Materially, we are all, Bhagavad Gita teaches us that we are a spiritual being inside this material body that we are seeing right now, externally. So, the person who has the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, then they can understand all of us are same nature, spiritual nature. All of them are spirit, all of us are spirit souls. But externally we have these differences. Someone is a man, someone is a woman, someone is animal body currently, bird body currently. Like that we take a different body. And then some of us are Americans, some of them are Indians, like that. Different races, different differences are there externally. But somebody who is wise, who understood the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, they see the equality in all of us in terms of spirit. Materially there is difference for sure. But then spiritually there is the equality, number one. How is that equality manifest? Furthermore, Bhagavad Gita knowledge tells us that all of us are children of one God only irrespective of how so many religions that are there practiced currently, whether it's Hindu, Christianity, Muslim, whatever, it doesn't matter. Or there's only one God who is the absolute truth, who is the origin of everything. All of us came from Him. Everything that we see around are also manifestation of, manifestation of His energies only. When we have this profound understanding, the practical application of that is, that means we're all brothers and sisters. When we, and when we see that, and we see, when we see that we are all meant to serve Lord, one Lord only, then, and then one Lord will be pleased when I be nice to him, when I see, be nice to her. Like that, with that understanding, the core understanding within our heart, when we are operating, then we are really nice to others. Otherwise, if superficially I am told, okay, we need to be nice to other people, then my consciousness will say, what is in it for me? What is it doing for me? So the answer is, very few people are doing something for us readily, directly. Of course, there's a lot of people are doing so many things indirectly. So that equal vision helps us to see in connection with the Lord everything we have, everything around us. That's so we can have a real unity among all the people, all the living entities. That is one, one quality. Samadarshina, equal vision. Another value is Icha, choice. This is an interesting one. Because all of us want to make a free choice. If you notice children, right from one to two years old, they will tell, I want to wear this dress only. 
I want to have this chocolate only. So I, all the choices they want to really make. That is what they are exercising, the autonomy. Autonomy, or uh, in other words, free will, is there for each of us, all of us as living entities. And Krishna respects our free will. Krishna doesn't interfere with our free will. So we can see in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, I mentioned how Arjuna was in bewildering confusion at the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. And then Krishna gives him wonderful knowledge, wonderful wisdom uh, to, to Arjuna. Then after speaking all that wisdom, that, that is so much book for us to read. So what does he say? Now you do what you want. He doesn't say, I told you all these logical points, one, two, three, four, five. Now you do exactly like I told you. No, he says, now you do what you like. So this is showing that Krishna is respecting the choice we as living entities have. And then he's encouraging us to use that choice properly. And then at the end, Arjuna says that I will act according to your desire. That means he's voluntarily saying that. Krishna didn't say, I put a gun on you. Now you need to act like what I'm saying. No, that is, that is acting out of love for Krishna. So, so that means Krishna always gives us a choice. Similarly, when we understand that we have a choice to make for all our actions, all our words we speak, then we use the choices properly according to the right knowledge we understand from Bhagavad Gita. For example, uh, Bhagavad Gita tells, Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita how we need to do some things not just because I am getting something for Loka Sangraha, for the welfare of others also we need to do something. So then, naturally, there are certain things we do because we need to do or we have to do or we want to do but some things we need to do as a duty so that we set a right example for others in the world also. So like that, it is another value we can learn from Bhagavad Gita about choice. Similarly, when, when we train our children as parents, we, we help them to navigate the choices from ch young childhood. Why do we need to make this choice? Why not this choice? When we give that knowledge, as they grow up, they'll make their own choices. They'll not come to us, Daddy, what should I do? Mommy, what should I do? They will not do. So that means we are equipping them to make the choices according to their free will. But we are giving the right knowledge. What is the implication of this choice? What is the implication of that choice? So that way, they are equipped, when they are equipped with these values and uh, the training how to make the right decisions, then they can do it properly according to what we want. Otherwise, we might force whatever we want. They may not listen to us. That is another one. Next is the Acharya principle. Acharya means teaching by example. This is also another value, core value that is defined in Bhagavad Gita. Some of the things that we can learn from this is we all uh, have a responsibility as a father, as a mother, as an elder brother, as a uh, temple congregation member. We are in all, all of us in some responsible position, even to set an example for others. Actually, the best way of teaching someone is not by speaking something, but when they see us following that what we are speaking and we have the character, that character will what will transform the others. Character will all will help them to accept the teaching also what we are giving. For example, for our children, let us say I tell my child, don't do this, don't do this, but I am doing the same thing. Then, actually it is said, children will say, I can, I, I, I see your example louder than what you are speaking. So that's why as parents, when we develop these values by reading Bhagavad Gita, by practicing Bhakti Yoga, then they'll naturally get those values also. That means one of the things you might notice, children catch how parents are behaving at different points of time. For example, how are they making choices? When they're in a rush, when somebody is coming in the way, are they snapping at them? Are they calm and they tell them, uh, I'm so sorry, I need to really go now. Please excuse me. Are they telling like that? Sri Sri Radha Madhav ki jai, Nita Gaur Sundar ki jai, Jagannath Baldev Subhadra ki jai, Giriraj Govardhan ki jai. So, that's a Acharya principle called teaching by example. And uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that 
sometimes he needs to do duty let us say something he needs to do not because he needs to get something but sometimes he needs to do something to teach an example to others because a leader is followed by others so what a leader does everybody follows so all of us are leader in some capacity in our society so we need to teach this by example that is another core value we get from bhagavad gita then when these things are learned by children as they grow up then they understand oh what is wrong with trying out this one day then they understand oh if i try out one day i'm setting a wrong example to others if i trying out one day my parent will not be happy my parents trust me i cannot break the break the trust of my parents like that the core values will help so next value is amanitvam or humility humility is considered one of the crest jewel of the vaishnava qualities humility uh, is very closely related to gratitude so when we in bhagavad gita krishna clearly describes how we all sustain by eating food and food comes because of proper rain proper rain comes when we do sacrifice so then this cycle of sacrifice is explained so now it helps us to understand uh, go from a lower consciousness to higher consciousness lower consciousness is what i am doing work i am earning money so i am buying food i am eating it that's the consciousness lower consciousness higher consciousness is even though i am earning money first of all i got job because somebody gave me job so second of all i am getting some food because somebody grow the grains grains somewhere some farmer grew the grains somebody transported it somebody makes it available for me and like that the higher consciousness is seeing the who is providing it the inner consciousness will develop by learning the principles of bhagavad gita and by practicing bhagavad gita so for example somebody was telling me other day as experiment someone one of my friend asked a small boy where does milk fr- come from can you guess the answer fridge yeah this this kid was even more smarter he said it comes from safe way so basically they don't know beyond that actually if you see many of us also are operating our life like that because we are breathing air right now but we don't think oh god is giving me free air right now remember covid time people were buying oxygen cylinders for so much money but we don't think god is giving me free air free water so to to live and the grains let us say i invent a nice microphone nice iphone but i cannot produce grains unless earth gives grains right so like that bhagavad gita teaches us principles of gratitude and when we have gratitude when we see because of others only we are able to do this then we naturally become humble otherwise i think oh see i can do this by myself but how did you learn when i came to this world i didn't know what words to speak also i didn't know how to touch a phone also now i think i can operate the phone nicely right that humility will come okay everything i learned it from parents elders friends teachers nothing came from me really when we understand that we naturally become humble and the extension of that is everything is coming from supreme lord himself so next quality is preeti or affection uh, like we saw uh, in a, when he was explaining about the free will and choice krishna gave choices to arjuna he didn't say now you tell me exactly what i told you to do so that choice is coming out of love because when there is love there is no force there is a uh, love and affection when there is there between two people in some relationships that's so they give and take between each other like that yeah so that's a another principle core value that bhagavad gita teaches called affection and this is very essential for relationships when you have affection between relationships then relationships don't go bad because the respect and affection if is there in a relationship naturally they'll flourish like anything so these core principles if somebody gets imagine somebody gets these core values then they progressing in material life also not just progressing towards spiritual success we are talking about yeah so there are some of the core values we can learn from bhagavad gita also uh, because it is short time today 
so i'll cut short on the relevance of bhagavad gita so hopefully it got you got some idea how bhagavad gita can practically impact each of our lives i'll mention one more example and then we'll switch to the next topic one more example is bhagavad gita teaches us that we all need to set goals but then whether we get the right result exactly what i want exactly as per my expectation is not only in my hand but is also in my hand but not only in my hand there are several factors of action discussed in bhagavad gita for example god is controlling everything and then time factor is controlling maybe i do all the hard work but it will take couple of years for it to manifest like that bhagavad gita teaches us that setting goals and striving for those goals is important for all of us and we need to do it but result is not 100% guaranteed in my hand that it teaches us why is that important because that will help us in so many different ways for example i will not become proud when i get the result because i think i did my part but because of god's mercy i got the result number 1 and number 2 when i don't get the result i want they don't become depressed and unhappy and feel that i'm useless no because bhagavad gita teaches us each of us has core intrinsic value whether we get the result or not and then when we understand the result is also not depend on me then i understand it's okay that result is not meant to me right now i can still live i can still add value to my life and value of others in the environment so that's what bhagavad gita teaches us this simple understanding that i am not the only contributor only factor for results like that there are so many lessons to understand in bhagavad gita so now uh, we talked about the what is bhagavad gita briefly and then what is the relevance of bhagavad gita in practical life today not only uh, relevant 5000 years ago because it's based on principles not details because details may change for example i might sit in this chair tomorrow i might sit in a different speaker might sit in a different type of chair but the principle is still the same like that so now now having understood the relevance of bhagavad gita how it is valuable knowledge now how do we know it's really valuable or not when we really try out for some time at least we we really that means bhagavad gita we can uh, systematically read bhagavad gita regularly especially we read the bhagavad gita with the translation purport by given by sri lavrupada because Bhag- not only the krishna's words are there in bhagavad gita but sri prabhupada makes it relevant for our lives how do we apply that in our life right now that is very very simple and clear to understand and so that's why i'm encouraging everyone oh, whoever has read bhagavad gita once already or whoever has not read completely yet read only small portions of the bhagavad gita or whoever has not started yet please read bhagavad gita that way you not missing out on this wonderful knowledge that is there for our life because this is like a life manual that will help us to live a happy life peaceful life so that is my encouragement to read bhagavad gita so now if i ask you uh, all to read bhagavad gita many of you might say yes but then you will face some obstacles after to read from tomorrow so to uh, i will mention some of the uh, some of the obstacles and how to overcome them this from uh, swayam bhagwan kesho swami maharaj is a, one of the disciples our prabhupada's disciples disciple disciple in <laughs> several generations but is a wonderful devotee he gives a simple acronym called habit h a b i t so you can remember also hopefully so the way he explains that is nicely is first is people say it is very hard to understand that is a h hard to understand so to overcome that is you find a uh, association you find somebody somebody to read with number 1 number 2 somebody who knows little bit more about bhagavad gita already there are several devotees in our in our congregation who would be happy to read with you together who will be happy to explain discuss like that i know one of the devotees here he is so eager he is reading bhagavad gita he is he is took an appointment for tomorrow he wants to discuss like that you can ask anyone such a nice attitude that they want to discuss like that you can also read with somebody and ask your doubts to somebody and we can help you many of the devotees in congregation can help you with that and second thing is a habit habit read right? h a b i t a is amount that means i don't have so much time 
because people think that there are so many books to read in their shelf. And Bhagavad Gita is a so much thick book. How can you read so much book? But that is our, uh, that is what is uh, stopping us actually. That is the tendency of mode of passion. So to overcome that, we tell our mind, let us read only 15 minutes a day. Let us read only two verses in purport every day. That's how we can overcome that hurdle. And uh, I don't know if anybody in the, in the room who can say that they do not have 15 minutes in a day to spend for Krishna. Is there anybody? If yes, we will want to hear your uh, obstacles so that we can work on that. Everyone has 15 minutes to read, right? Wonderful. We can make time. Yeah, we don't have time usually, but we can make time. With whatever we find importance, we can make time. So, uh, for example, I was thinking about we can have a reading program. Oh, so let me go that later on. Let us go to HA. We called hard work. It's hard to understand. We said uh, take guidance from somebody. And is I don't have so much time. Start small, 15 minutes. Or even 5 minutes. Whatever works for you. Then is B. It's boring to read Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so that's a correct thing. Because when you... The secret to uh, read something interesting is when we are looking forward to what can I learn? And what can I apply in my life? When I'm reading with that understanding, not that I'm supposed to read, then it will be boring. But let, I heard that Bhagavad Gita has all this knowledge. Let, us, let me find out. How can it let, help me right now? Can it help me right now? With that understanding, let us see how this helps me. With that understanding, if you read, then it's not boring anymore. Next one is inattention. So, this again... I'm not able to pay attention for so long. Okay, so don't pay attention for so long. Read for a short time. Five minutes again. Or 15 minutes. Whatever works for you. And then HA, hard, uh, hard to understand. Amount of time I don't have. Then B is boring. I is inattention. And then T is time not available. If you notice, three of these points, we talked about short time read. So, that is the key. Consistently reading for short time, we can make a lot of progress. There's a devotee called Vaisheshi Prabhu, who is a disciple of our founder, Acharya. He developed an app called BSH, page by page. That will tell you, if you read two pages every day, when do you finish that book? If you want to finish a book in six months, how many pages you need to read every day? Like there's an app on iPhone and Android that you can use also. Also, there's a website, I believe. BSH, page by page. So then, we can take motivation of that apps like that. And you will find out when you consistently do something, it becomes a habit and it's very profound. I've seen many devotees who started their reading six years ago. Now they completed Srimad Bhagavatam, they completed Bhagavad Gita, they completed many small books. Just because they read little bit every day, that's all, nothing more. So that's another cultivation we can have. Now, these are some of the obstacles we talked about. Now, to help you, uh, I don't know how many will take up the offer, but we'll try. Uh, to help you, I was thinking, uh, January 1st is coming. Everybody setting goals. You can set a goal to read two verses every day along with the purports. Even if you read again previously, just two purports, two verses and purports. And uh, we'll create a WhatsApp group, for example. Sorry, one more WhatsApp group. <laughs> but one more WhatsApp group can take and we can remind you every day that read these two verses today. Here's the link to go to. So you don't have to go, get out from your bed, go to the shelf, take the book out, open the pages, and read also. You click on the link, and you can read. That is the, that is the idea we're trying to say. So that way, every day we, we read two verses. Bhagavad has 700 verses total, right? So it will be 350. So that means one year. Some, some do it with five verses a day, but I thought two will be a... Uh, easier to easier goal for everybody. So I was thinking about one verse, but then one two years too long. <laughs> so two verses, let us try. Let us see how many of you, if you were interested, please tell me, let me know. I'll also send a message in the temple WhatsApp group so that you can join that WhatsApp group. So you'll get two verses every day. So you can read two purports every day. And then contemplate on it while you're going through the day. What did I understand from this verse? How does it work for me? How can I apply in my life like that? That's the first, uh, first application request I'm making, which is read every day. Read regularly. Yeah? 
Now, next request I'm making is, anything we find valuable, we want to share with others, our friends, relatives, other neighbors, colleagues, we want to share with others. So, please be an instrument in sharing this wonderful knowledge. Some people don't know that there's something called Bhagavad Gita. They don't know that there's a valuable information there in Bhagavad Gita for us practically to work in life. They don't know. So you can help. How you can help? Let us say you learn one principle in Bhagavad Gita. You can share with them. And if they like it, you tell me this is from Bhagavad Gita. Then, like that, if you tell ten times, they, oh, every time you're saying something valuable, it's coming from Bhagavad Gita. Wow, let me check it out. What is there inside? So that is one way to inspire others. Because there's a big barrier to start, open a book and read. So that's one way you can help share this knowledge. And the way you can share with this knowledge is by gifting a Bhagavad Gita to one of your friends. Because many times they don't have know what is the right version of Bhagavad Gita to buy, where to buy Bhagavad Gita, or I need to really go to internet, type in Amazon, type in Bhagavad Gita. It's so much work for them. But if you give a gift, they will cherish this gift for a lifetime. So give a gift to them. One give one small thing. We can give it to our barbers, our doctors, our children's doctor, pediatrician, whoever, whoever we come across basically. Even somebody comes to our home, handyman, plumber, give them Bhagavad Gita. So they'll learn. They'll benefit. Good thing about Bhagavad Gita is, I've seen wonderful stories. Just yesterday, one devotee came, walked into the temple, and they've been systematically reading Bhagavad Gita because that Mataji is pregnant and she is baby in the stomach. So she was reading Bhagavad Gita systematically. So now she is in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Now Krishna inspired her. What is next? She, she, wants to, she took the Srimad Bhagavatam set. So she will read systematically now for the benefit of baby. Imagine. And this is not one story I heard. When you read, somebody read Bhagavad Gita systematically, I heard they come to somehow to devotee association. Somehow I have seen so many people. They come to Padal business, they take Bhagavad Gita. After they finish Bhagavad Gita, they, come, they show up in the temple. Somehow somebody reaches them, tells them, temple program happens. So like that, it's so much auspicious to read and it's valuable to apply in our life also. So that's another way to share. Of course, you probably, most of you may be knowing also, this month we're celebrating, Gita Jindhi we celebrated. And if you like to donate for Bhagavad Gita, for example, we send Bhagavad Gita to prisons, uh, hospices, old age homes, different places we send where they are not cannot afford money, but they can take free, free books. So you can give donation at the book table if you like to, and that will also go a long way. There's no amount is small. Whatever you like to give, so that way, that is also you're contributing to share this knowledge like that. So, but most impactful is you doing it. This is the last option, because when you're doing it, you really know whom you are giving this knowledge to whom you are giving this book to. And you are available if they have any questions also. And you don't need to know the answer. You, know, you need to know whoever knows the answer. That's enough. Because many questions I don't know answer. Then I go ask somebody I, I know. Okay, he, this Prabhu is asking me this question. What is the answer? Can you please tell me? Okay, then I learn, I understand. Then I share with that Prabhu like that. So like that, we don't have to be expert to share this knowledge. So basically we learned that Bhagavad Gita is relevant for this world. In this today's life also, for all of us, is a very handy tool, like life manual for us. And then we learned that reading systematically will help us only. So let us cultivate a habit of reading. From January's first reading program will start. So let us see how many of you can stick to the program. And it's understandable. Life situations will come. Two days we cannot read for some reason. Third day we need to catch up. That is what sincerity is. Otherwise we are not sincere. Yeah? So take, uh, take this opportunity to read two verses. Whether you join the group or not doesn't matter. You can do it personally also. Two verses a day and read and see how, how it impacts your own life. Yeah? And then we talked about sharing with others. Share in your, your own way. One person. Maybe you can have a goal. Every year I will give to the gift of Bhagavad Gita to one person. Just one person. It takes some intelligence to do that. But the moment you have a goal, Krishna, please help me. I want to somehow distribute one Bhagavad Gita this year to someone. Then Krishna will make things happen. Remember, we said everything can happen because of Krishna's mercy. So then, like that, you pray, you can give it to one person. So I'll pause here.
Anybody has any comments or questions before we end for today? No? Okay. So, Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.